Good morning, um, and distinguished guest. Um, I guess uh, b between now and the next uh, opening ceremony, we have like very light uh, session um, of um, the lightning talk. Um, and uh, thank you very much for uh, this opportunity to share a little bit about um, the the hive. The, the the title is People, Pandemic, um, and Information Platform. Um, which is the WHO's uh, digital space for health emergency preparedness um, platform um, powered by uh, communities. Um, my name is John Lee, technical officer um, at WHO headquarters, Geneva, in Switzerland. Um, I work with an area where teams are working on preparing for next pandemic. As you can see, um, it's not really a popular topic. <laughs> we, we just went through a pandemic. Um, but the, I guess the idea is that uh, when um, next pandemic happens, not if, when the next pa pandemic happens, then we'll be ready as a, a global uh, community together. Um, the, the purpose of this presentation is to uh, share the high level overview of the platform. Um, and uh, as you can see in, in the name, like a beehive, um, we, um, we envision a platform that is creating a space of activity, uh, support, and, and community to come together. Um, you, you see uh, the photo up there is a Kyoto. It's, it's great to be here. Um, did a little bit of um, the homework about uh, the Kyoto. Uh, the colleagues sitting over here might know a bit better about. Um, apparently in uh, 1467, the Onin War happened. And you know the the um, it actually uh, triggered the the Kyoto citizens to uh, develop autonomous communities to protect their lives uh, by themselves. And um, in 16 centuries, it evolved into uh, another version, um, Choshi Kinomuku, um, and Cho which uh, in turn become Choki or Chosadame, which uh, they form a rules uh, formulated by the residents of the. Um, the Kyoto for the purpose of making the comfortable for themselves and maintaining favorable environment in the community. And I see that there is a um, the important uh, the similarities there between the high platform and the the community sense in, in Kyoto. So uh, it, we just went through uh, COVID nineteen. The, so devastation uh, caused by the pandemic COVID nineteen. Um, has brought really urgency to strengthen the way the world prepare for, uh, prevent and detect the response to health uh, emergencies. The, the question is, um, are we prepared to globally respond to the next major pandemic? Um, are we ready to cooperate and perform across countries um, and across sectors to f face such a threat? Uh, not only to protect the health in, in major epidemic and pandemic, but also to protect, uh, protect economic development, uh, protect political and social systems, and not to repeat the history again. Um, this is a bit of a ch chart about um, the, what are the tangible um, uh, impact or, or devastating effect of COVID-19 um, and the other emergencies that we just went through. Um, it, it was a destabilizing event, um, and the effect of the pandemic has continued to reverberate in our society, our political system, health system, and, and global economy. So it is important to note that uh, pandemics are increasing in, in impact and scale and frequency, um, and the epidemic and pandemic risk has become a, a, a global strategic concern. Um, and it, I'll, I'll also note that uh, this was the second pandemic of 21st century. Um, so, like it or not, this is new normal, um, and we don't expect the frequency of these epidemics to, to go down, unfortunately. In fact, um, the vulnerabilities of um, the all over the world, and you know, whether it's developed or developing uh, countries, um, have increased, not, not decreased. So, the question is, how do we prepare the communities before the next pa uh, pandemic happens again? Um, and especially, I mean, obviously there are many work to be done, um, but I'll be speaking to 
the uh, the preparedness of the communities um, when it comes to preparing um, for the next uh, pandemic. Um, so the WHO Hive team uh, envisions uh, community-centered, um, the trustworthy health information that facilitates um, the health information and the synchro synchronous and asynchronous collaborative working practices, uh, supported by a few functionalities, um, including community spaces, uh, document repositories, and documentation, instant chat, and breakout groups. Um, the some of the technological uh, fact, but I, I guess the, the, um, when you think about the uh, the community center approach, to me, it is fully informed and appropriately informed community uh, who are actively engaging in developing solutions. Uh, some of the earlier speakers in the previous session uh, mentioned very important uh, topic about this as well. Um, is that um, having the community centered and community led is a very important piece of um, uh, preparing um, our digital ecosystem for, for the next era. Each um, individual is a part of the multiple communities. Uh, for example, the workplace uh, can be a faith community, a uh, learning community like universities or health or wellness. And, and each community influences an individual and their access to information and decisions and an individual makes during the health emergency um, and how they behave. So the, uh, the challenge is that the, when the high impact public health event happens, um, it's often accompanied by the infodemic. Um, I think it was touched on a number of sessions throughout this um, IGF. Uh, it's defined as an overabundance of um, the information, whether it's accurate or not, um, in the digital space or physical space. Um, it ac accompanies acute health events such as an outbreak, an epidemic, which is what we saw um, in the recent event of uh, COVID-19. Um, the infodemics drive today, um, uh, it, especially in digitized, digitized and interconnected um, ecosystem right now, um, and individuals are exposed to a very complex and highly targeted uh, information ecosystem. Um, and the, the, the contents are not always from the most reliable sources, um, and they can serve to uh, confirm biases. Um, and as you know, the, it takes time to uh, build trust and it's hard to earn. But as we observed throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, it's so easy to um, erode um, uh, very quickly. So um, small team at um, WHO began to um, think, I think th this was a, uh, before um, COVID-19 pandemic, um, how do we actually get the right information uh, to the right people in the format that is actually appropriate and um, so that they can make uh, decisions to protect their uh, communities. Um, and when, we recently went through the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, we were able to um, answer the question um, of, you know, can we uh, rapidly, rapidly uh, ramp up the communication and address um, the key questions and concerns uh, with large networks? And, and the answer is yes. Um, the, we were able to um, you know, use the opportunity to provide the COVID pandemic to uh, engage with uh, the networks like World Work Network, all the industries and associations, um, the Faith Network and Youth Councils um, and other um, associations and groups associated um, uh, in, in across the world. Um, so uh, building on some of those um, the success that we envision, uh, the building a digital community space um, uh, that is um, safeguarding communities during high impact public health events um, and creating a space for people to come together and, and discuss about um, you know, whether they might have a question about the situation, whether the sum of public health social measures, um, you know, what does that mean in, in their context um, and also reach out to um, the experts, whether it's the WHO folks or the peripheral networks in the Ministry of Health, um, or other uh, uh, the, um, the advocacy groups and stakeholders 
uh, within the pandemic preparedness. Um, there are a few uh, features. I wouldn't uh, go make, make this into uh, the technical one. Um, there's a, a four key components. Uh, there is um, ability for you to connect and collaborate. Um, you can uh, host, e host and attend events. So then you can build um, what you saw in, in digital, um, the hybrid format of the events such as this, that you can really build the collective intelligence together and you can access information that is um, slightly more efficient uh, using, uh, thanks to um, the technologies, machine learning and, and um, AI technology to really connect the people, information and communities. Um, and having a space, the digital space people can go to um, when it comes to the specific topic of um, epidemic pandemic uh, preparedness. All right, so um, with the, um, and before we um, open up to a quick uh, discussion um, with uh, the participate, um, participants here, um, you know, as a WHO, uh, we're not a technology expert, um, uh, but we are the, the you know, technical experts in, in health. So we would like to um, um, invite as many experts as possible, especially in digital space and um, you know, IGF is a really important forum to, to learn about uh, what it means in engaging communities in digital space. So uh, we need help from global experts in, uh, and, um, in bringing the communities together while leveraging all the technologies that is available and uh, enabling uh, building community relationships for the preparedness and response to health emergencies. Um, and uh, most importantly, um, not go through what we went through um, is not leaving um, anyone uh, behind, um, addressing the vulnerable and marginalized and, and um, the communities who, whose needs are also um, addressed um, and, and they have a place uh, they can go to to interact with the people. And I give the communities an uh, opportunity to bring um, the, the local and contextualized uh, information that is um, the, the more appropriate for them and also um, connect with the, um, the global um, the experts um, of the global health uh, public um, issues. Also, this, uh, this will, could create uh, an opportunity to uh, directly or indirectly um, uh, the manage uh, the, some of the issues around the mis and disinformation um, uh, the naturally by participating and uh, not letting some of the questions and concern progress it into um, the you know the information bias thereby uh, progressing further in into narratives than than what we saw during the COVID nineteen pandemic that created a um, uh, the huge impact on uh, public health and everyone's uh, um, you know, livelihood and, and, and life in general. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll um, end my presentation. Thank you for attention. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, I will invite um, everyone for um, a quick discussion before we wrap up. Any, any questions? No? All right, well then, um, we'll, we'll end this session early and um, maybe we'll uh, proceed to uh, next main uh, session. So there are a few uh, pens and, and brochures. Uh, feel free to take them uh, for, for as a reminder. Thank you.